Welcome back to the Beer Junkies. Today we are brewing a Belgian Blonde. The Belgian Blonde is a golden Belgian ale with subtle spicy yeast character, a smooth malty flavor, and soft dry finish. Let's get started. The water profile for the Belgian Blonde is 50 parts per million of calcium, 5 parts per million of sodium, 75 parts per million of sulfate, and 60 parts per million of chloride. Uh, I will do that by adding calcium chloride, gypsum, and epsom salt to both the mash water and the sparge water to get that water profile consistent throughout the entire brewing process. Um, right now I have the brewing water heating up so that we can mash in. So while that's heating up, let's go over the grains that we're gonna be using. I really want that malt profile to shine with this Belgian Blonde. So uh, my grain bill is a little bit more complex than it is with some of my other Belgian styles. So starting out, I use around 65 to 70% of a floor malted Pilsner. Uh, the floor malted Pilsner will add an earthy malt flavor with intense aromas of biscuit and honey. Um, as with all beers that I brew, I recommend using malts from the nationality of the style that you're brewing. So for this Belgian beer, I would prefer to use Belgian malts. If you don't have access to some of those Belgian maltsters, um, Weyermann also has a very good floor malted Pilsner. To that Pilsner, I also add around 10% of Munich and Vienna malts that will beef up that malty graininess. And I also add around 5% biscuit malt to further enhance that bready biscuit flavor. I really want that malt character to complement the spiciness that's going to be added from that yeast. I have all of my grains ready to go. I have the rice holes on top to help promote that grain bed stability. Um, underneath, I have all of my grains crushed, uh, cracked just enough to allow the starches to be exposed, but the husk is still in there to build up that grain bed filter that I'm going to want to clarify the wart during mashing. We just finished mashing in, so as normal, this is our mashing setup, pulling the wart from the bottom of the mash tun through our false bottom, pushing it through our wart pump, going into the lower herms, coming out of the upper herms to maintain our mashing temperature, and it is continuously recirculating to clarify our wart and set up that grain bed filter. We mashed the Belgian Blonde at 152 degrees Fahrenheit for 60 minutes. They give us a nice mix of alpha amylase and beta amylase for a uh, balanced fermentable sugar profile. After that 60 minutes is up, we will be back for mash out. We just finished mashing. So with the same setup as before, we are mashing out, pulling wort from the bottom of the mash tun, pushing it through our pump, going through the Hermes coil. But now the hot liquor tank is heating up to about 176 degrees. This will, through recirculation, heat our mash up to 168 degrees. We just got some mash out. So now we are sparging. We are pulling the wort from the bottom of the mash tun through the false bottom pushing it through our wart pump, but we have switched the lever to direct the wart to the boil kettle instead of the Herms coil. So it's going down here and filling up the boil kettle. It is also heating up to reduce the time it takes to get to a boil. At the same time, we are pulling our sparge water from the hot liquor tank, pushing it through our water pump, and it is rinsing the residual sugars that are left in the grains. While the boil kettle is heating up, let's go over the hops we're gonna be using. I like to use uh, middle fruit, but I recommend just using any noble hop you would like. I add between 26 to 28 IBUs at the 60 minute mark, and then I add six to eight IBUs at the five minute mark. Um, I don't need to add too much hop flavor. I want it to be a clean bitterness with a soft dry finish. Most of that spicy flavor is gonna come from the yeast strain, so we don't really need to push it with these hops. We just got to a boil, so we will boil the wort for 90 minutes and add the hops in as we just described. At 15 minutes left in the boil, I will add one pound of cane sugar per five gallons. This will increase the fermentable sugars without adding any flavors and will promote a crisp dry finish. At 10 minutes, I will add a yeast nutrient and at five minutes, I will add our fining agent. We just finished the boil, so now we are whirlpooling, pulling the wort from the bottom of the boil kettle, pushing it through our wort pump into the tangential input which will create a vortex inside of the boil kettle to pull all of the hops and proteins to the center so we do not push them over during knockout. We will whirlpool for 10 minutes and then we'll turn the pump off and let it wind down for 10 more minutes. We just finished the whirlpool, so now we are going through knockout, pulling wort from the bottom of the boil kettle, pushing it through our pump through the heat exchanger. We're going in right at around 62 degrees. 
we have our oxygen being injected right there and we are filling up the fermenter and pushing out all of the excess air. For our Belgian Blonde, we use White Labs Belgian Ale Yeast. It is very phenol forward, so you'll get lots of those cloves and other spices that you want in both the aroma and the flavor. Uh, we ferment at 67 degrees for about a week or until you are four specific gravity points away from terminal gravity. Uh, we will then raise it to 72 degrees for the diacetyl rest. Hold it there for 48 hours, cold crash it to 33 degrees, hold it there for at least 24 hours, transfer it to the bright tank, carbonate it to 2.5, 2.6 volumes of CO2, keg it, and then enjoy. All right, this is what we've got. It is crystal clear and golden with a white head on the smell. The White Labs was not lying. It is very phenol forward. I get lots of those spices, the cloves, the allspice. Oh, it's all in there. The taste is very similar. I'm getting lots of those spicy flavors. Um, a little bit of malt though. I'm happy with the malt backbone that we built with those uh, grains that we chose. And there's just enough bitterness to counteract some of the sweetness. It is a very pleasant beer. We are over the age of 21. We do not condone underage drinking. Please drink responsibly. <sighs> Cheers. If you would like to see more brewing content like this, make sure you click that subscribe button right below. And please let me know what you'd like to see next in the comments. Cheers.